Welcome everyone to my new series on coding the VEX IQ robotic system with C++. In this series, I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks to improve your coding ability and learn the benefits of using a text-based coding language as opposed to coding blocks. Let's get started. G'day everyone, I'm Mr. Code. C++ is a very popular coding language. Although not as popular as Python is nowadays, C++ is still found everywhere because of its long and storied history. The language has been around since 1983 and it is studied by millions because of its versatility and adaptability. It is a harder language to learn, but the best incentive for learning C++ is that it gives you more career possibilities and improved salary expectations. To get started, you will need the second generation VEX IQ education kit. And this kit gives you all the parts necessary to build a stack of different robots. Once you have the kit, visit the VEX website to get the instructions to build Clawbot, this robot right here. We will be using this model throughout the tutorial series. Now I spent a lot of time writing tutorials, testing the code and editing these videos together. So if you find any of it helpful, then please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. It is your support that lets me continue making VEX videos. So I thank you in advance. Download and install the VEX IQ coding software. So it's called the VEX code IQ software for your operating system. Then run the program. And this is the same program that is used for both your block based scratch coding, Python and C++. So once you have loaded it up, it looks a little bit like this. You click on the file button up the top over there. And then you click on new text project C++ and that's it. This is how to get started. All right. So on the left hand side, it's very familiar to you if you have uh, done any of the block based scratch coding. So uh, just like in scratch, they have organized all these coding uh, uh, commands into blocks uh, so that you can search for them easily if you haven't uh, typed in C++ before. And uh, this is your coding area on the center here. Uh, if you scroll down, all your code has to be put into this main uh, main function. And you can drop the code by simply uh, grabbing the code from the left hand side and dragging it into the line you want to put it in. So when you're getting started, this is the best way to to do your coding. You don't have to type all the code at once. Uh, you can drag it in to uh, test it out and make sure it works. Another really cool thing is that for every single uh, example of code, you can click on the question mark to see how the code is implemented. Now that we have our coding environment set up, let's do some code for our drivetrain. Now, this tutorial is designed for uh, students who are a little bit more advanced with their VEX uh, IQ coding. So if you have already done uh, VEX IQ using scratch blocks, then this is for you. If you're not sure of how to do coding and you're just getting started, I highly recommend that you do the basic tutorials using the coding blocks first before you jump into this tutorial. Okay, so let's go and check out our code again. We're going to uh, add our driving base, uh, our drivetrain. So first of all, we're going to uh, use a cable to connect up your robot. Once it's connected, you can switch on your robot. And then you will see that uh, the brain icon up the top here uh, has been highlighted green. That means that your robot is connected and ready to go. Now, uh, we have dragged a bit of code here that's for the wait for one second, but we are going to ignore that. Uh, let me break down some of the, um, the the conventions here for us, okay? Up the top here, we have some boilerplate code. We don't have to change any of this, okay? So this pragma uh, line up here, the include line, and also the namespace line, we can just ignore most of that because we want to get straight into coding and get our robot moving using C++, right? So let's click on our devices icon over here, and let's add our drivetrain. Okay, so if you have built your Clawbot correctly, 
uh, you should have a two motor drivetrain. And the drivetrain is basically the way for you to move your robot forwards, backwards, left and right, just like if you were using the coding um, blocks. Here you click on your left motor port, which is number one, and then your right motor, which is number six. Okay. Our gyro is an internal gyro in the brain. So if you're using our second generation hub, uh, then that is the one that you select. And then you can click done. All right, once you have your drivetrain imported, you can close your devices menu by clicking the arrow on the top of my head. And then we can look at the drivetrain blocks uh, over here on the left hand side. Here we have drivetrain dot drive forward, drive for uh, 200 millimeters. That is the one that we're going to test first. Now, inside C++, there is always a file called main. So this main file, this is where your function, uh, your executable code goes. So here we're going to make our robot move forward for 200 millimeters. I'm going to change that to 100 millimeters, which is 10 centimeters. You can also change the units and the direction. What are the units and the direction values? You can click on the uh, question mark and then you can see that, okay, I can change the units to inches or millimeters if I wanted to. I can change the distance number and the direction can be either forward or reverse. Okay, so if I wanted to drive backwards, I would change the forward uh, string to reverse and that's all. Oh, well, actually it's not a string, it's a value. So here I click it back, all done. Let's test it out. So I click on download up the top. Would you like to save your project? Okay, I'm going to save it as VexIQC++ number one. All right. So once I press run, it should run my program. Okay, so here we're going to run. Whoop, the robot moved. Okay, let's have a look at it again with the camera focusing on the robot. Here it is. Again, I'm gonna press run and it goes forward. Congratulations, everyone. You are all C++ programmers now. All right, let's have a look over here and dissect some of these other blocks, okay? Uh, let's um, move backwards. Oh, well, it's called reverse. Uh, and then let's make it so that I reverse 80 centimeters, I mean, 80 millimeters, uh, and uh, make sure that our robot can move backwards as well. Okay. All right. So I didn't download the code, which was my mistake. So let's download the code first. All right. Let's have a look at the table and let's run it again. Okay. So the robot is able to move forwards and backwards. If I wanted to move the robot in a sequence of moves, uh, say to move forwards then backwards, then I can do this line by line. So here I can go drivetrain reverse and then uh, put another, whoops, control C, control V, uh, forward. Then this is going to make the robot move backwards 80, uh, 8 centimeters and then forward 8 centimeters. Okay, download the code again. All right, let's have a look when I press the play button. Okay, so uh, you can also, ah, you notice these two slashes. These mean that um, this is a comment that tells C++ to ignore this code. So if I wanted to uh, temporarily remove this code. I don't have to delete it. I can just put two slashes in front of each line that I want C++ to ignore. Uh, that way it won't cause an error when I run the code. So now that we know how to move our robot forwards and backwards, we can also get our robot to turn around. So if you go and look on the side here, we have our turn for, turn to heading and turn to rotation uh, command. So here we're going to use the uh, turn for function. So we're going to turn toward, towards the right 90 degrees, click on download, and then let's run that. We're going to see that it will turn towards the right and 90 degrees. 
Okay, it's really really handy. I love it how the uh, inertial sensor is built into the brain. Uh, what that does is it means that we don't have to build a separate sensor for that. Really really cool stuff. We can also change the speed of our robot. So if I want to change the moving speed, uh, I can set the drive velocity. But you got to make sure that you switch your velocity uh, before you actually tell your robot to drive, right? So here, set drive velocity, let's make it 100%. And also let's set our turn velocity to 100% as well. Not recommended if you are trying to move really precisely, but we'll see how we go. Okay, so we're going to make our robot move forwards, backwards, so backwards and forwards, and then turn towards the right. All right, let's see what this looks like. So it's a much more aggressive move. You can see that the wheels were lifting off the table uh, because of the, ro the robot's speed. Let's check it out again. Really, really cool stuff. So if you need to get places in a hurry, then you can switch your drive velocity right up. Uh, if you wanted to move slowly and more methodically, then turn it a little bit lower. Another really important little bit of a setting is the set timeout uh, setting here. So if I set the timeout to be one second, it means that the drivetrain's only going to uh, spend at most one second to move towards any kind of direction. So uh, if, for example, there is something in the way or if uh, the sensor is being blocked for any reason, then it's not going to spend more than one second to move towards that target. Uh, if I have a, uh, I'm going to comment out my uh, straight moves and then I'm going to show you what's going to happen if I block my robot from spinning, okay? So here, we're trying to turn 90 degrees, uh, like that, okay? It's going to turn 90 degrees. But what if I hold onto my robot or block it from moving? So I've lifted the wheels off the ground, and you can see that the wheels keep on trying to turn 90 degrees, even though I've lifted the robot off the ground. That is really helpful for if your wheels are slipping, uh, or if there are lots of obstacles in the way and you need to get to 90 degrees. But uh, sometimes uh, it can't be helped and you want to move on to the next block of code or next line of code. Okay, so we will set a timeout. Let's have a look at how that works. Here we're going to set a timeout for one second. We go download the code. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to lift the robot's wheels off the table. And then uh, it's no longer going to spend all that time trying to move to 90 degrees. If something's in the way, it's only going to spend one second before it times out and moves on to the next line. See? I want to talk about my Robotics Center Creator Academy. CA is dedicated to teaching kids about coding and robotics. And in 2022, our students were the Australian national champions in VEX Robotics, and four of our teams qualified for the Worlds in Dallas, Texas. If your team is also heading to Worlds, then make sure you comment below. We love to share ideas and connect with other teams. If you're in Australia, why not visit us in Eastwood or Chatswood to see how we can support your child or school robotics team. Visit our website at creatoracademy.au. Next lesson, we will continue looking at motor functions and get the robot claw to lift and drop some objects. Hope to see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.